Hi again then folks and welcome to day four already of the special projects builds in pack number two. This time for a car which I know some of you were looking forward to from the trailer that I did. A group five racing version, if you will, of the Ferrari 512BB. Of course there were real racing versions of the 512. This one might not be familiar to some of you though and that's because it's fictional. <laughs> and what I was planning to do when I was first looking for a livery to get some inspiration from the community, was to go for a, you know, traditional replica, which is what I tend to do. But then this one just popped out at me, and even though it's not real, not only does it look believable, but I think it just looks really good. And it's a fairly popular livery, it's a fairly well-known one for this car within the game, but I just think it looks really good on the car, and I liked the kind of fictionalised approach that it took, which of course allows me to take a couple of liberties with the tuning. And what I'm going for here because of course there were Group 5 cars that looked just like this, Silhouette Racers, Lancia Beta Monte Carlo, the Ford Capri, and they all have kind of a 4, 5-ish hundred horsepower output, sometimes a bit more. The weight is lower than we can get in the game, which is unfortunate, but you know, we work with what we've got. And then as far as the visuals, of course I'll flash up the player's name on screen, but anyway you can jump down to the description and just download it straight onto the car. So as far as the tuning goes, in addition to what they've done for the visuals, being a race car, it's fairly obvious what we've done. So basically racing parts across the board. So stage one weight, as far as the club sports section, I do have the power restrictor, even though you don't actually need it for this build. We've got stage two weight, of course ballast. The semi-racing stuff is the crank, the fully customized computer, of course the diff, stage three weight. Again, I did say it's a race car, but I have not fitted the body rigidity. Strangely, it makes no difference at all to the point level. It's got to be one of the only cars in the game where that happens, unless it's just a glitch. So you could go for it if you want to, but if it doesn't change anything, it seems like kind of a waste of 30 grand, really. As far as the racing stuff, of course, balance tuning, polish ports, racing filter, silencer, manifold, pads, the discs, I've gone for the drilled ones, doesn't really make any difference, go for whichever one you want. As far as the clutch and flywheel, the suspension, the transmission, and the hard tyres, those are all race spec as well, as you can see. And then for the extreme section, there is nothing fitted there. So you could go for carbon ceramics, like I've said before, but they're not entirely necessary. So technically, you can wring just a little bit more power out of this, and if you, for example, on a spin win a better weight loss, then of course go for that, because that will make it more accurate. But most players don't get access to that kind of stuff, so that's why I avoid doing that, generally speaking. So about 500 horsepower, at less than 1100 kilos, and barely over 700 points with racing tyres. So you could kind of detune this if you wanted something a bit different as a cash cow. But I will say it's designed to be a car that kind of feels period appropriate. So it won't necessarily be as forgiving as some of the cash cows. So we've got the racing hards fitted. For the suspension, the ride height is 105 on the back, 95 on the front. So seems like it would be a wedge. It doesn't quite look like a wedge though. Now, although a lot of those silhouette cars do kind of have that stance anyway. The anti-roll is quite high on eight. 25 though for the ratio of compression on the dampers, 35 on the rebound, so probably quite a lot lower than you'd think. Very high on the springs though, 3.4, so it's a super stiff build. The camber angle is 3 degrees, so quite hefty as well, group 3 car style. The toe is in 30 on the back, 20 out on the front of course for stability. As far as the diff, of course with a mid-engine rear-wheel drive classic Ferrari, no two people are going to feel exactly the same about something, so if you want to change this, give it a try. If you don't like it, mess around, of course, or just fit settings that you already know you prefer. But give this one a try and see what you think. So I've gone for 50 on the initial torque, 60 on acceleration, and halfway on braking. So quite aggressive in terms of those numbers. The nitrous, of course, isn't fitted. For the fully customized transmission, I've just gone for a simple 300 km an hour setting. Five-speed box that gives you, what, 190-ish miles an hour, at least on paper so more than enough for that kind of time period the power restrictor and the ec are untouched we don't have any ballast you might be thinking why did i say fit the ballast and the restrictor then basically just because i always like to have them because they're cheap and it means if you do have to restrict the car for an event you've already got it so you don't have to exit as far as the ecu like i said that is fitted of course the downforce is set on the maximum front and back 
Not a huge amount of downforce, unfortunately, but again, we work with what we've got. And as far as all the parts, you can see what we have fitted here. So if you do have the extra weight reduction, absolutely go for it. It would make it that much more accurate. But for many of us, we probably don't have access to that, myself included, at least at the time of making this video. So now if we jump out to a circuit with it, we can, of course, see in practice what it feels like. Now, like I said, as fast as this car is, as much of a race car as I wanted it to feel like, and as badass as the livery looks and the design and the bodywork, I still didn't want the car to be too forgiving. I wanted it to be faster, sharper, more aggressive, more competitive, of course, than the standard car. That goes without saying. But I didn't want it to feel like it was just holding your hand. You know, it's a Ferrari. It's a race car. You want it to feel like that savage, you know, smell the petrol, the visceral 70s kind of racing vibe that a lot of those machines had. And I think that I've kind of captured that fairly well. It's super stiff, super focused, super fast for sure through corners, but also it can definitely bite back. So it's got that little bit of slip slide on the back end if you really push it. But overall, if you keep a nice flow going through the corners, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this car. Certainly if you decide to use it at say the 700 point level, maybe with a bit of ballast or slightly less power, you can have a ton of fun with it. And if for nothing else, by classic standards, it's a very good car. If you compare it to modern cars, certainly against modern race cars, it might not feel that great. If you compare it to 70s cars, it feels fantastic. <laughs> so give it a try, see what you think. I hope, of course, you enjoy it. This was kind of one of the hero cars of this particular pack that I did. I was originally going to have it as the main car in the thumbnail, but then chose the Porsche instead. So give it a try, see if you like it, and of course, tell me any changes you made that you found to be maybe better for other players to benefit from. So if you want to check out the other builds that I've done this week, of course, check those out on the channel. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.